Do you consistently refuse to cut, style or even wash your greasy shoulder length hair? Do you never open your curtains and fear that even the smallest amount of vitamin D will ruin your dark and broody persona that you only show off on Discord? Do you appreciate the nutritional and health values you receive from uncooked bat heads? Well it seems like doom metal is the perfect genre for you. Doom metal is one of the oldest subgenres of heavy metal that combines extremely slow tempos, especially in comparison to other subgenres within metal, with the lower tuned guitars resulting in a much thicker and heavier sound than you may be used to if you listen to bands that look like this. Something that remains pretty unusual for doom within the metal space is the fact that doom metal bands often have vocalists who can actually sing, as opposed to being able to do this. <laughs> Doom vocalists usually offer a variety of singing styles including higher pitched wails and more operatic style vocals. Regardless, they pretty much always sound like the theatre kid who got horrendously bullied at school. Lyricism is extremely gloomy and pessimistic, including themes of depression, fear and an impending sense of doom. This is either written with a sense of angst, although oftentimes it's more introspective which really complements not only the sound of the music but how damn bad a lot of these musicians look. Doom is slow and slow is doom. This highlights the main characteristic of doom metal which is of course its speed or lack thereof. If you enjoy tapping your toes and looking at your watch whilst you wait for the next chord to play in a song that has a similar runtime to the hit mockumentary Surf's Up, doom metal might be right up your alley. But 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 but, metal fans love a fast pace, how the f*** did this happen? I'm sure you're all asking yourselves this question as you stare into your blue light device listening to my horrendous British accent. Thank you by the way. Well in order to find that out, you're gonna have to continue watching. The structure and themes of Doom links back to blues, with Doom songs often being in the same scales as blues. You may think this is the only link between this and this, but no. The emotionally drained spirit of artists like Robert Johnson and Sun House parallels a lot of the music heard 40 years later. This isn't distorted enough though, so it doesn't count. Ignore everything I just said. I really do hate to do this, but it has to be done. One of the earliest proto-Doom songs actually came from the Beatles, in the form of the song I Want You, She's So Heavy, which is a slow-paced bluesy ballad. Unfortunately, it's an obsessive love song about this person written by this person so it's probably best left ignoring. In order to explore the real origins of doom metal we need to take a quick trip to Birmingham which is honestly the first location that comes to mind when I think of despair, depression and doom. As expected, doom metal would really begin as a result of a horrendous accident resulting in an unusual injury. Black Sabbath guitarist Tony Iommi would fall victim to an accident at a sheet metal factory he worked at, resulting in two of his fingertips being ripped off, which was catastrophic for Iommi. Not only would he be unable to play guitar to the same level ever again, he would likely have to stay in Birmingham. The horrendous thought of this, mainly the latter, motivated Iommi, and after being shown the three-fingered jazz guitarist Django Reinhardt, You'd think Iommi would practice for hours on end, relearning the instrument with his new disability. You see, that would make sense, but you have to remember, Tony Iommi is a welder, and welders find a way. He would construct new fingertips out of leather, which allowed him to continue to play guitar. Unfortunately, the downside of these new fingertips was an inability to play complex chords, which forced Iommi to find another way to make a song sound full. A lot of the stylings of early Sabbath that became fundamental to later doom metal would actually be because of the limitations of Tony Iommi's fingertips. He would detune his guitar, lowering the string tension to cause less pain to his fingertips, and created simpler riffs consisting of mainly power chords. This resulted in the first doom metal song, aptly named Black Sabbath, combining eerie occult vibes with guitars that were far more distorted and abrasive than anything else in rock music at the time. Although the sound of Ozzy's voice floating over the slow, dense crunch that is Iommi's guitar playing may sound right for lyricism that focuses on more myth and occult influences, most of the songs were actually inspired by the Vietnam War. This is seen very clearly in the song Hand of Doom, which is another one of Sabbath's more clearly Doom songs, which is actually said to be the origin of the name by certain individuals, I don't know who, I'm sure some people say that. Sabbath would experiment further in not only their music but their personal lives, and eventually moved away from the Doom meta formula they had created. But not to worry, enough crusty, shampooless had heard the early works of Sabbath, and the sound of Doom would expand at an ironically slow pace. A lot of the early adopters of the genre were actually releasing stuff not long after the early works of Sabbath, just nobody seemed to care at the time. One of these bands is Pentagram, who had been releasing some pretty doomy singles since 1973. Their music remained largely unnoticed until this dude made whatever this is very popular, which resulted in Pentagram's self-titled record released in 1985 receiving a lot more traction, continuing the development of the doom sound. They would add more distortion, make the vocals even more melodramatic, and even sing some of the album from the perspective of a supernatural force. What more could you ask for? Another band that got their start not long after Sabbath's early work was The Obsessed, who were originally named Warhorse. The Obsessed would get their name from an obsession with a slower pace, which led to them actually taking 14 years to release their self-titled debut, which came out in 1990, offering a delicious doom offering that I'd recommend. You'd imagine it took The Obsessed that length of time due to the meticulous crafting of their music, but well, that's not the case. The singer of the band had left to join St. Vetus, or another band that were prominent in the early Early days of doom. Although they were very doomy and gloomy, much like their contemporaries, they were actually signed to 
Black Flag guitarist Greg Jin's record label, who would consistently encourage them to speed up and punkify a lot of their music. Although St. Vitus had this irritating little gremlin poking at them, requesting more speed, their music would actually get slower as their career trudged on, really developing doom metal. This is all good and well, but I don't know, this doesn't seem epic enough. Luckily, 1986 would see the release of Epicus Doomicus Metallicus by Candlemass, which would really take the doom concept and make it as melodramatic as humanly possible. Candlemass would combine over-the-top operatic style vocals with powerfully powerful power chords, dismal string bends, and downright unwelcoming melodies. With this album, Candlemass would emerge from the grubby grave that was the underground, would rise to the top of the doom metal heat, becoming one of the first metal bands from Sweden to become globally recognised. There is no one quite like the Scandinavians at taking an emerging metal subgenre and pushing it to its absurd limits. The genre would continue to branch off the albums like this, this, this and this, although things get a bit confusing at this point. Doom metal had reached its shootout in every direction to random subgenres arc, so I think it's perfect time for... Funeral doom metal is essentially the low testosterone cousin of traditional doom metal and gets rid of any sense of aggression within its music, instead of replacing it with more depression. Apart from this, pretty much every aspect of doom metal is pushed to its extreme within funeral doom. That is slowed down to an absurd degree with songs being generally around 40 BPM. Although they do turn down the tempo, the yeah, yeah. knob does not see the same treatment and that is pushed to its limits. Vocals are replaced with hushed growls and grunts. They are far too depressed to let you hear a single word. Bands within this subgenre include Bell Witch, of Esoteric and Ahab. Death Doom Metal is the deliciously disgusting amalgamation of death and doom metal, which was the result of many death metal bands introducing doom metal elements into their songs, as opposed to the other way around, which makes a lot of sense. Not even the Greg Jinn could get a doom metal band to speed up. This subgenre features two styles, melodic focused and riff focused. The former incorporates more of doom styling such as slower pace and the use of guitar effects to create atmosphere. The latter is literally just death metal with doom metal's down tuned tone. Bands from the subgenre include Disembowelment, Catatone, and October Tide. The previously mentioned epic doom metal emphasises the more theatrical side to doom metal, introducing more complicated melodies and vocals that are delivered in such a dramatic manner to evoke as much emotion as humanly possible, often sounding more akin to something heard at a school theatre show than a metal concert. Epic doom metal also reaches into the sweat-drenched bag of power metal and more traditional heavy metal for more influence. Bands include Candlemass, Solstice and Solstitude Eternus. Black and doom metal injects a little bit of degeneracy into doom metal, adding the signature black metal trip heavy guitar tones and blast beats into the mix. Bands include Alters of Grief, Dark Flight and False Coven. Stoner Doom Metal, also known as just Stoner Metal, is probably the most popular of all these subgenres, and you could even argue that it's more popular than Doom itself. Stoner combines Doom Metal with psychedelic rock, creating a heavy soundscape that is more melodic than its counterparts. The riffs are often groovy, sliding over the slower tempos of Doom. We also absolutely love Chronic, with common lyrics from the music referencing that icky sticky wicky stuff. I don't want to spoil too much of this cough inducing genre, as I'll be back to cover this in a longer video. Bands include Sleep, Dope Throne, and Bongzilla. Another subgenre that I almost forgot is Didgeridoo Metal, which includes a didgeridoo in its instrumentation. Doom has continued to be a genre that is loved by many all over the world, and unlike many other genres, it hasn't been damaged by the forever falling attention span of a typical media consumer. If anything, doom metal has just gotten slower and slower since its inception, creating some amazing background music for people who probably have a little bit too much wax in their ear. Doom really appeals to our deepest and darkest thoughts. It's a perfect genre for a stormy morning of playing subway surfers in bed rather than being a function member of society. It's perfect when you finally think you found the perfect goth girl on a date and app just to be sent that dreaded scam link. And now that I think of it, it's perfect for our rapidly deteriorating society. And honestly, doesn't that just sum up doom metal perfectly?